Hi, I'm Mel's Max Friend, and today I've got an update to my tutorial on how to root an S8 on Bootloader version 5. I found a more usable ROM. Well, here's the thing. If you follow my tutorial from before, this will be much easier, because all you have to do is flash the new system image and safe strap. I'm going to show you what I mean. So, I'm not going to be doing it, because I've already done it. Because you can see this looks more like the stock ROM. Okay, so you want to transfer the the system image to your to your phone's SD card or NAND. Well, I'm gonna transfer it to my SD card in this tutorial. You could transfer it to either the SD card or the NAND. Let's see where is it? I know I have it somewhere. Where is it? Okay, I have it somewhere I know. Okay, just ignore the random folders. I just have so many folders on my computer. Like seriously, a lot of them I don't even use. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Okay, I think I might have left it on this one hard drive that I have, like a USB hard drive that is 4 terabytes, because my computer's running low on space. Okay, I'll cut it and plug in the hard drive. There we go, now I have that hard drive plugged in. Yeah, there it is. Ignore most of these files, we just care about the system.img, because that's the only one we're dealing with right now because we're doing the safe strap method we're not doing the EDL method because because you don't need to do the EDL method if you already have safe strap installed and if you follow my previous tutorial you will have safe strap installed so let's wait for everything to load and by the way if it tells you to replace any files on your SD card do so it'll make it a whole lot easier because then it will have the same file name as on the computer. So that will make it a whole lot easier if you do that, so just do it. I'm going to hit Control-D right now. Okay. Let's copy and replace. Yeah, the reason why my thing looks like this is because I'm using MTP to transfer it. I'm not, like, using, like my phone's SD card plugged into my computer. I have my phone plugged into my computer using this USB-C cable right here. Yeah, you don't need USB 2.0 for this because it's just transferring files. It's not flashing stuff. With the flashing stuff, you do need USB 2.0. And that's why I had that hub in the other tutorials because that was for flashing. The reason why I'm able to make a commentated video today is because before I was unable to do it because my house is so noisy, but right now I finally have some peace and quiet because it's like 7 o'clock a.m. where I am right now, and I'm the only one in my house is awake. I mean, if you're wondering what time zone I live in, I'm just going to say this. I live in the central time zone. So all I'm going to say about where I live, all I can say about where I live is that I live in the central time zone. Because I'm not going to like give away my address, I don't want you knowing that. I mean if I ever want fan mail, I'd get a P.O. box because I just don't want people knowing my address. Let's just wait for this to finish copying, then we'll reboot the phone into safe strap. Yeah, it will take a while to copy because it's over 4 gigabytes, meaning you can't put this on a FAT32 SD card, it has to be XFAT. Because FAT32 doesn't support files bigger than 4 gigabytes, so this will have to be an XFAT format SD card. 
I've heard Safe's job can have issues with reading SD cards bigger than bigger than 64 gigabytes, but it's not been an issue for me for some reason. Maybe because I'm using a really good one that's 256 gigabytes. I'm using one made by SanDisk. If you have ever have issues, just use a smaller SD card. Any SD card format XFAT that's 8 gigabytes or bigger will work. But just make sure when you're buying an SD card, don't buy one of the cheap knockoffs, because those are usually different size than they say they are. Okay, now let's close out this window. Unplug the phone. And now we reboot the phone into safe strap. Yeah, that's the nice thing about this ROM. This ROM has the feature to reboot the phone into safe strap like that. You see it's rebooting. Just wait, it's gonna boot into safe strap. See, there we go, we're in safe strap. So there's two steps to this. You hit install, select storage, make sure you have micro SD card selected. Choose install image, not zip. The zip is for installing custom ROMs that are in the form of zip files. Choose system.img, no not that one, system.img. Flash it, and then once it's done flashing, I'm not going to do it because I already did it. Go to wipe and slide. Because you do need to wipe data, cache, and Dalvik. Well, here's the thing. Recording just ended for some reason. Wiping. Okay, now back to what I was saying. I hope it doesn't close out now. When you wipe data with... With... Safe strap, it will not, it will not wipe your internal storage. What that means is it will wipe your apps and your save data for your apps, but it will not wipe any files you have stored on your NAND, except for those stored in places where app data is stored, because you know, if you have a rude phone, you can do that. Well, I'm not going to do it since I already did it. So once you're done, reboot into system. And you won't see the factory binary thing like you did before. You'll actually see the normal boot logo. Like on my phone, you'll see a Samsung logo and then the Sprint logo, because mine is Sprint. From what I've seen, it does take a little longer to boot with this ROM because here's the thing. I've tested with my J3 Merge versus this phone with this ROM installed, and the J3 Merge will sometimes beat the phone in the beat the S8 in the race. Oh, sometimes they tie. I've, I've seen the S8 win sometimes. It's pretty arbitrary like this, if you know what I mean. Okay. Now I'm going to say this. This is Mel's best friend signing off.